All right, so next, our next speakers are from Orlando, Florida. They've built a revenue share organization of over 2,000. They were the number one exit franchise owners in the world five years in a row. They were number one in closings, number one with fireside sales, and number one in listings. Every possible category, they were number one. Of course, all winners do is they know how to win. They're competitive, and they're from Orlando, Florida. Help me welcome Gil and Lorena Ramos to the stage, my good friends. Come on, baby. Go get them. Thank you. So check it out. You guys have to be excited. I'm only upset that my phone's sitting over there and I haven't, <laughs> built, I haven't got to the, uh, the ticket so I can buy my ticket for the next <laughs> event already. So check it out. Um, here we are. We're excited. Tell us, we want to tell you a little bit about who we are, how we got here. And then we want to share intimately some of the parts of how we grew our organization, um, the way we did it. So a uh, little about us. This is our family, this is us. Yes, um, my name is Lorena Ramos. I am excited to be here and uh, a little bit off. It's actually very humbling for me to stand on this stage today in front of all of you because I am actually was born in Mexico as an immigrant. My parents left this country to go to the United States for a better life for us. And here I am now talking in front of almost 2,000 people in the, my homeland. So it's actually very yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, thank you. Um, so this is our family. It's, it's big, like our organization, um, which is why we, <laughs> we do everything. We go big or go home, right? Um, we have our oldest, our 20-year-old Anthony, 18-year-old uh, Bella. We have two sets of twins. Again, I go big or I go home, right? <laughs> so we have Aracelis and Ariana, which are 14-year-olds, and then our uh, younger twins, Jasenia and Jaden, who are six. So, of course, we have to do this because we have to feed them. Yeah. They don't want ponies. They don't want yeah. ponies yet, yeah. but they might, okay? <laughs> they might. <laughs> and, uh, and they want to eat all the time. All the time. Like, all the time. We yes. got five different types of milk in the house, stuff like that. So yes. this was pretty important to us. <laughs> and I want to start right now by letting you know, uh, some people look at us and are like, hey, you guys have a really big family. How, how do you do that? How do you manage all the time, stuff like that? And I want you guys to understand that it actually gets easier. How many of you guys have only one kid? Two kids? Raise your hand if you have five or more kids. So you guys know that. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. For some people, and we kind of laugh at this it sometimes, it's like, for some people, they see us with five, eight, uh, six, I'm sorry, we have six. Six kids. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> She's like, she has extremely aggressive ovaries is what the problem. <laughs> but these two guys, you guys have, how many kids you have, Gene? Five. five kids? Yeah. Brent, how many kids you have? Eight. Eight? eight. Wow. Don't you be scared to go this. big. <laughs> Some of you guys need more kids. <laughs> Here's the deal. So we laugh about this all the time. You know, some people go to like, oh, how do you manage that many people? What happens is as you start to grow, you grow some leaders inside your organization, even your family, and they take positions. They help cook. They help clean, right? So we got, that's, our, that's our biggest organization. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, been, I've been asking for more kids. She, I used no. to anyway, but uh, she tied all those up. I'm, I'm just I shooting neutered. blanks now. I neutered myself because I give birth in litters, so I'm done. <laughs> done. So, so here's our story, all right? We came to an event just like this one. And I'm, that's my Carlos voice, my yeah, Carlos, Carlos German. Carlos Car is not here, unfortunately. Yes. He invited us to this event. And by the way, um, I was totally honest with you. I was like, hey, man, I'll come to this event, but I want to let you know I'm just coming here to – we're going to go on vacation together, right? <laughs> we love Vegas. It was a Vegas event. Uh, EXP, I believe it was uh, EXP, EXP shareholder. Yeah, sure. And I was like, hey, I'll go to your little meetings and stuff <laughs> like that. But, like, just know right now, I was like, my whole timeshare thing is like, I'm just here for the free ticket, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we totally came just to say it's not for us. We just wanted to be, you know, nice about it, right? So we stayed in the Airbnb, and Al came in and didn't realize Al, was, Al set us up and was in our Airbnb all of a sudden at 8.30 in the morning. I came out to have coffee, and he's just there talking to me. And uh, we're like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And then we went to the event, and I totally had a plan. I'm going to shake hands with just enough people so I could say I was there, right? And I was really hoping to take a selfie with somebody, and I'm coming down the hallway, and there was like a crowd of people, and it was just like this little rock star, well, kind of a big rock star guy was standing there. And as I was walking up, everybody was walking away from him, and I'm like, that's the guy I'm going to talk to. 
right? And at that moment, I realized I was about to get Gene, Gene Frederick. <laughs> we didn't know who he was at the time. No offense. Clearly, we know now. But back then, we were new. <laughs> no clue. But here's what happened, right? And he probably has no clue that this happened because he does this to so many people. And I'm talking to him. And I'm like, hey. Um, I'm, and I'm, and bro, I'm a brute D. So I'm like, hey, man, you make any money with this thing? <laughs> And he totally played it cool with me, and he's talking to me. He starts talking to me about blah, 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 and I'm like, no, 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 no. Do you make any money? <laughs> like, I heard there's, like, there's an app thing that you can show off your app, and, like, you can show me exactly how much you're making. <laughs> and he's, like, super coy about it. Like, and I'm like, this guy's not going to tell me anything, right? <laughs> so I was like, he must not be making any money, right? <laughs> So I, I keep pushing him, and he's just telling me about how it's changed his life and his family and things of that nature, and he's asking me questions, and I'm avoiding answers because I don't want to commit to anything right now. And I'm like, hey, man, it's totally cool if you don't want to show me the app. It's totally, I, mean, I totally get it. <laughs> I was like, and, uh, and by the way, again, I was, you know, kind of thinking in my whole ego game. I was a rock star, broker, and stuff like that. I'm like, so he's, 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 he pulls out the phone now, and he starts looking at it, and I'm just trying to, like, get an angle to kind of see his phone. <laughs> But he won't show me the phone. <laughs> and he keeps talking to me about EXP, asking about my goals. And he's like, oh, man, that's so great, right? Good for you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm asking what? Show me the phone, right? Show me the money, right? So then he opens it up, and, and we kept this for I thought it was like $200,000. And I'm like, time, oh, man, I'm like, time. totally cool, man. That's, that's awesome. You're making $200,000 a year. That's like, good for you, buddy. Like, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> this EXP shit's not for me. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, that's what I made last month. And I was like, babe. <laughs> babe. And I, and I grab his tag, and I'm like, meet, meet Mr. Gene. <laughs> I literally went back to my business partner, Bobby D, the franchise who's in the room right now. And I said, if this is even half true, and he knows that I really don't get very excited about this kind of stuff. So it, it, if it was half true, we have, to take, we have to take a look at this. We owed it to our agents. <laughs> but we, uh, and I was still in my ego. And if you're a broker and stuff like that, that was the hardest thing for me. It was like we owned our own brokerage. Our names were on the doors. We had a lot of responsibility, but we were kind of incomplete. Let me share about ego a little bit. I'm actually an attorney. Um, I am a realtor now because you guys are much funner. Um, <laughs> so I have been a family law heavy litigation attorney for the last 14 years. <clears throat> when I tell you that I probably divorced or fought about as many people are in this room, I'm not lying. I've had thousands of cases that I represented people on. I'm really damn good at what I do. So, but with that being said, is that I had to take from you to give to you. I had to tell your ugly story to make sure that he won, right? And what I never did was share anything with you. I wouldn't share with my opponent. I wouldn't tell him I would like to keep my little evidence on the side because that was my, my winning thing. And um, I became an attorney mostly because, like I said, I was an immigrant. It's the thing to do, right? I'm an attorney. My brother's a doctor. I mean, can you get more cliche from immigrants? Yeah. I don't know, right? Um, your parents are not going to be like, I'm going to risk my life jumping this fence so that you can be a realtor. <laughs> like, they're just not going to do it. They're not, right? <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm recruiting here in Mexico. Jump the fence, be a realtor. <laughs> and that's what my father did. Like legitimately jumped the fence with a pregnant woman. And he's like, you're going to be somebody. And I'm like, yes, I am. And here I am, a realtor <laughs> on stage in my own home country wearing this beautiful skirt that I would never wear if I was an attorney because, you know, you wear gray and black. So, um, but... That was one of our biggest whys, is that I needed to get out of heavy litigation because it was um, not fulfilling my soul. It was not who I was in my core value. I learned that at Tony Robbins as well because I also drank that Kool-Aid girl. Yes, because he is amazing. And in one of his events, I realized that who I am internally and who I wa had to be in my job did not coincide. So I was constantly in conflict of who I was. And I saw all the stuff he did and all the stuff you guys did. And I'm like, God damn, that looks fun. Like, they work together. They want to lift each other up, right? We don't do that. My job is to push you down and kind of step on you a little bit so that I can get that win, right? And yeah. um, it sucked. It sucked. But um, this opportunity came for us when Carlos invited us, and 
I'm privileged not to have to take the pre-course because I am attorney, so I studied Friday, Saturday, Sunday, took the test Monday, and here I am. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so much more happier. <laughs> and, and the whole kind of collaboration concept was new to us. I mean, I was a franchisee. I didn't even collaborate. In fact, I want you guys to know the five, well, the eight years I was with my, my previous brokerage, I was with Exit, which was a single level residual company. Um, she never once traveled with me. Never came to one convention, never went to one seminar that I was in, nothing like that. It was, I begged her for years to, uh, to get in real estate. Because I was like, man, if you get into real estate together, we're going to crush it, right? And then it, EXP came along, and Brent's like, hey, we're going to go to beautiful places. Uh, we're going to go to Mexico. So I was like, hmm, tell me more. <laughs> so we started talking about collaboration. And before we joined... I was privileged to talk to Veronica Figueroa and Carlos German and my boy Bobby. And we said, hey, man, if we're going to do something, if we're going to move our organizations. And by the way, Veronica was a Hall of Famer with EXP, I mean with, uh, with uh, REMAX at the time. And we're like, if we're going to do this, we're going to stand for something. We're going to build an alliance and we're going to help improve the consumer experience. We're going to help the agent experience and we're going to change people's lives. And we sat in a room together multiple rooms, multiple times, and we game planned to be on this stage right now. So thank you guys, because of course, collaboration is key. So without you guys standing there, of course, we wouldn't be standing here, so thank you. So we thought we'd come in from a different angle and really kind of talk about, because I'm a go big guy. Who in this room is a go big person? <laughs> so let's do that, right? So you, you're allowed to plan, you're allowed to stress, you're allowed to have anxiety. You might as well do it over big deal stuff, right? So here's the five things that we believe that you've got to do to be a 2,000 plus age, uh, organization. Now, we did this in our first three years. We're probably going to be here next year with 5,000 agents following the same exact system. Did I say probably? No, for sure. For sure? We don't probably do I anything. said probably because it yeah. could be 6,000. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here he goes. Number one, you have to understand it's not about you. The minute, the minute you let go of your ego and you realize that it's about the person that you're serving and their goals and you become a servant leader and you truly want to help them solve their problem, you start to win. The goal for us is we grow leaders that grow leaders that grow leaders. In our organization, we have tons of people, some that have traveled here, Drew Lamar and Mava, and we've got uh, uh, Team Grade and Team Davos who won some awards to come up here. We've got some amazing people that came and traveled with us because we want to share the experience with them. We want to help them grow with whatever they, with the, whatever's important to them, whether it's doubling their business. I know a lot of people that can help people double their business. Go on Jay Kinder's uh, calls he does every single week. Find out how you can help them. And you do that by just being curious. I say this all the time. Curious, curious people make more money. I've said that for years, right? That's your goal. Find out how you can help serve somebody. And that's how you win. Don't be afraid to think big. Have a goal and let your upline know. Be ready to run. Leverage, leverage, leverage. So Tony Robbins once said, and I use this all the time, is do what you do best and think, and then pay for the rest, right? So for us, you know, mothers and family, so, you know, we don't, the best thing we do is not laundry, right, or cooking. But it's time consuming because it's like a war that I've never won. I mean, I, I win the <laughs> battles. I win the battles, never the war. So... But it's time consuming, it takes mental space, and you can be doing that to help other people grow or help grow your organization. So when he mentioned that, he's like, do what you do best and pay for the rest, and now you hire someone to do your laundry, right? Or you hire someone to deliver food for you or a nanny to help you with your kids, all which is great. But then I was telling Gil, I'm like, why don't we say, do what you do best and then leverage the rest, right? Because I, be very honest, I probably don't know the model like I should, right? But, <laughs> But you know what I really do good is connect with people. So I'm just like, oh, that's really cool. Here, let me introduce you to my husband. <laughs> he, he's really good. Or I'm like, Veronica, you have a minute? Can you get on a call with somebody, right? So that's what I do. I leverage. Because um, I know explaining the model is probably not my, my best thing to do. And I'm just not going to do it because I'll fuck it up. So, <laughs> so I just, 
I leverage because leverage is key to everything. Everything in life, leverage is key. Yeah, in fact, how many how many phone calls have you made? You I mean you you basically recruited a quarter of, of our front line. Yeah. How how many times have you watched the model explained? I'm just curious. I, I watched it with the group of people that you were teaching it to, so how, I don't know a handful of times. How many phone, outbound phone calls have you made? To recruit? Yeah. I don't know. No, I didn't. Do so that. what do you do? How do you do it? Okay, so. <laughs> I leverage, but like for example, a lot of you are gonna go Facebook Live, right, while you're here. So one thing I noticed is watch who's watching you, right? So I realized a lot of my friends were starting to watch our Facebook Lives when we were introducing some of our agents. Um, but they were hanging out a little longer than you would think that they would hang out. So what does that tell you, right? They're interested, they wanna hear more. So as they're watching the Facebook Live that my husband's doing, I'm just chiming in on the sidelines, like in their DMs, like you like what you see? You like, like what it? You see? You want to talk more? How about lunch, right? And that's how it works. Or I was in Ulta, and a girl's like, hey, how you been? Good, how are you? She's like, oh, I'm real estate. That's great. I was like, you want to do lunch? <laughs> and then I bring them in, right? Because that, that's all I can do is I connect with people. I talk to people. Um, I can get people's whys. I understand. You know, I can sit down and talk to them. Um, but painting this bigger picture, I leverage I leverage them. Yeah. And, don't, and, and leverage your upline, leverage your downline. I'm learning social media from people that I'm just introducing to EXP. It's like, that's incredible. How do you do that? Right? Somebody actually came up to me like, hey, man, I love your TikTok. I, I have TikTok. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, you got to overcome the recruiter myth. It's a lie. It's never been true, right? So first things first, you don't have to be a superstar recruiter. The clearly, truth is, clearly you don't. The truth is we've only recruited about... 0.6 people a month. You can outbeat me. You can do more than a month. You can do it one a month, right? 36 months in the business or in, the, in EXP, less than one a month. So that's not rock star numbers. Number two, you have to be, you don't have to be some kind of extrovert superstar. To be very frank with you, we're not. We're actually <laughs> much introverts to your amaze. I know. You're like, we're what? No, you got to say, at 9 30, I was like, okay, good night. <laughs> Like, we can sit up here, we can talk, we'll definitely mingle, but our personality is more introverted, right? Um, but we will definitely play the extrovert card very well when we need to, and we're going to be these extroverts for our team when necessary. But you don't have to be that extroverted person, super hype, always in the party, to be able to recruit. You just got to be you, authentic, and provide value, and then people are just going to be naturally attracted to you. Yeah, and, and, and here's the other one. You don't have to be a mega influ influencer, some book writer, you know, do five billion in sales last year. It's gotta be you. The guy who recruited us had six people on his team. Four of them were either his cousin or brother. <laughs> the sixth person on the team, I helped him recruit when he owned his own company. I was exit only because I didn't really want to hear about EXP. I was like, hey, I can help you grow it back. I actually, I actually, I was like, hey, don't tell me about this EXP thing. Why don't you join my team and I can help you with lead generation, blah, blah, blah. Boy, I'm so he glad he didn't mad. listen to me. He got mad, slammed the computer, and he's like, I'm out. <laughs> Build a cult. Sure. Right? <laughs> By the way, we have multiple cults in our organization. We have people who are like Airbnb cults, right? Like, this is how you make money. And then they bring together events. We went to uh, Tony Robbins, what, 2015? 2015. Our babies were just born. Yeah. And... We, we went to it and we're like, oh man, this is incredible. More people need to come. In fact, since then, we never bring less than 50 people. We bring 50, 75, 100 people. And we don't care if they can't afford it. We, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do loans with them and sponsor them, right? We'll figure it out. I talked to my business partner, Bob. I was like, hey man, so um, we're going to have to allocate some money. Uh, <laughs> and we'll make payment plans. We'll figure it out. But get them inside, in, inside the culture. Because that's what's going to be what they're going to be able to be passionate about and get them excited. Mm -hmm. Number five, if you want to, if you want your team to grow, you've got to grow. So you're going to start reading. This book right here changed my life. I told you I'm an introvert by nature. I had to go figure out how to make friends. <laughs> I literally read the first page of the book. Want me to read it to you? I'll save you eight ninety nine on, on uh, Amazon. First page of the book more or less says. People want to do business with their friends whenever possible. That's the inside page. It takes up the whole page. Second, second page says people want to do business with their friends even when it's not so possible. Meaning they own a brokerage. They're a team leader. They're happy with their broker, right? 
I needed to make more friends. I needed to figure out some scripts, so that book can really help me out. So I'm an avid reader. I can probably, this is just one, but I can probably give you a list of books you can read if you want to find me later on. Like, I, I strive to read 52 books a year, never quite hit, but striving makes you hit high, right? So I do about 30 or 40 books a year. This is one that I recently read that I thought was very important and impactful. It says, you know, we should all be millionaires. We all should be millionaires, right? There is no reason why we shouldn't. But the key factor is your mindset to money, right? Like I told you, when I came here, when we came to the United States, um, some things my parents did great and other things, you know, I'll forgive them for, right? And one of them was when they would instill in me that money is the root of all evil, right? And I don't know if that's a Spanish thing or what it is, but it's like money is the root of all evil. And why is that? Mostly because we didn't have any. Right. So, um, so it must be evil. So it must be really bad. Um, and then, of course, the people that they saw had money weren't probably the kindest people. And, of course, some of the contribution that you see, you see um, hidden, right? You see the ugliness of money. But I find that when you make money, who you are in true essence is what comes out. Granted, right? Contr they're huge contributors. So because of that, um, it's an important book to read in efforts to try to change your mindset about how you receive money, and this way we can all be open to become millionaires. All right, last book, 10X Rule. This book's often misunderstood. It's kind of like having a lot of kids, right? So the 10X <laughs> Rule is this, right? Make it very, very simple. Save you some money. Who do you got to be? What people do you need to talk to? What, 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 re what circle do you need to mastermind to 10X your business? What resources do you have to put in place? Just make the plan for that. Stop, plan stop playing small. Stop planning small. Play for the big one. Lastly is this. You're in an event called One Big Fire. That meant a lot for me when I heard Jay say that because a lot of you guys have fire. A lot of you guys are doing some incredible stuff. And I heard Jay say this intimately. We were in Key West. He's like, well, what if we can put all our fires together? What, would we, what, would we, what, what could we become can we change this industry forever? Absolutely. My, my man Glenn, when he put this out there, 1 million to 100 countries by 2030, I'm inspired by that. But he can't do that alone. He needs your help, right? So who's going to help? Thank you guys so much. Gil Ramos, my wife Lorena Ramos, it's been our pleasure to serve. And we hope to see you guys on stage next time. Lorena and Gil! Woo!